Welcome back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro. Today I'm joined by my great friend, Diego Loretta Mola. He is the global authority in everything Pisco, and he's gonna show us how to make a Pisco sour. have a wonderful brand that you brought to this country called Barso Pisco and uh, you're going to show us how to make this very, very, very amazing cocktail which I believe deserves to have a lot more popularity called the Pisco Sour and uh, Paquito, show us what you got. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. You know the Pisco Sour is a very, very old cocktail. Maybe not the oldest cocktail with, uh, made with Pisco but certainly the flagship of Peru. Wow. It's very symbolic and for us Peruvians it's as hot as uh, our own history. Really? It's a very traditional cocktail. So before we start, we always want to make choose the glass. Normally, it's been done in a rocks glass, but as we've been in this cocktail revolution and we're trying to make cocktails a little more sexy and beautiful, um, I like to propose to make the cocktail today in a cocktail glass. Okay. And how about if you help me? Let's ice it because one of the tricks for this cocktail is it has to be very, very cold. So if you can put some ice and some water to help uh, the, the cocktail glass get very cold, it would be fantastic. Happy to, my friend, happy to. And it's a simple cocktail, but you have to always make sure that you're gonna make it balanced. And the balance is between the sour and the pisco that it's gonna come along with. Sour meaning you're gonna use simple syrup, one to one, you can make it at home, mix it. Equal parts of white sugar and water, as simple as that. That's why Some it's called simple like, syrup, huh? That's what it's called simple syrup. <laughs> you can buy it too, but sometimes they're gonna come with additives and you want it as natural as possible. We've made some simple syrup here and we're gonna use that. Okay. So in a mixing glass, very simple, you just grab your ounce and it's gonna be a Pisco Sour Peruvian style, traditional style. It's I called love that. the 311. 311. Three parts Pisco, one part simple syrup, and one part fresh lime juice. Okay. Some people may say, well, it's a little strong, but it's tradition. You cannot go against the tradition. If you want to bring the recipe to two ounces or two parts of pisco, then you lower the other two parts because you want it balanced. I love so, the fact that you're bringing the authentic one to us uh, because it's very unique and it's very special and that's what this show's all about. And that's what you're going to drink when you go out into brew. That's right. So we're going to put in one uh, ounce of simple syrup. Fantastic. And we're gonna do one ounce of fresh lime juice. Okay. So you grab your lime. You wanna really get the ends out. Cut it in the half. Here, we're gonna get our lime squeezer. And why don't we measure it? Because normally limes will yield about one ounce, which is 30 CLs. Mm -hmm. um, these limes are big. So let's talk about limes for a second. The limes that we most commonly know in America and around the world are called Persian limes or Mexican limes, mm -hmm. which tend to be very juicy, big, but compared to the Peruvian limes are a little bit different. Peruvian limes are smaller, super intense in flavors and aromas and acidity, and therefore the pisco sour has something of a strong structure and intensity and flavor. Interesting. So here, we just put one on one, but I'm gonna do something special. Okay. Because I'm not gonna have that intensity that normally Peruvian limes have, I'm gonna use half of this lime and I'm gonna put it inside the shaking glass. Ah, so, because so the oils will partake? Rub into the eyes and actually give you that burst of lime and citrusy that is very delicious. Love it. Now that we put the cheap products, which is the simple syrup and the lime, we're gonna use Pisco. Now, Pisco, has always been known Pisco for Pisco Sour, but Pisco does a lot more than a Pisco Sour because we have many varieties of grapes that make Pisco, so we have different flavors that are uh, imparted in the different types of Pisco. We're gonna use Quebranta. Quebranta is a dark grape, very rich in sugar, it yields great wine with high alcohols that then we transform it into the brandy that is gonna make the Pisco. And here, we're gonna use now three parts. Three parts means three ounces or 90 mLs. Okay. depending where you are in the world. So this is two, and this is gonna be uno. uno. So you have three one one ratio right here. So three one one ratio. Now you have your base. Okay. Now this cocktail 
uses egg white. Mm -hmm. Traditional flip physics uh, sours have always used some degree of egg white for texture in the cocktail. Now, some people may be allergic to egg whites. You don't need to use egg white. Today, you can grab water from chickpeas. You buy your chickpea, no salted uh, cans, and use that water, it's called aquafala. And it's and also you can, vegan, right? Vegan, so you can make vegan sours. Very good. So here, you know, we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce to an ounce depending. If it is pasteurized, which many people want to use so they don't want to crack the egg, put a little bit more because it has a, runs a little bit more. If it is a real egg, just put, you know, half ounce, half, half a small egg white and then you have a beautiful cocktail ready to be shaken. Now, okay. we're gonna shake it. Normally, you shake it with ice, but because we wanna emulsify it, I'll do a quick dry shake. Okay, and that is a dry shake with the lime inside of it. Everything, the whole, and we're gonna have to shake it and smile. <laughs> so what I we're trying it. to do here is trying to emulsify the egg white so we can get a nice frost. Once we're done with that, we're gonna just open it and now you have a nice froth, and we're gonna we're gonna add the ice. You don't need to add a lot of ice, but you want to make sure that the amount of ice that is there is gonna be enough to make it very, very cold. Okay. And now, nice little white shake. <laughs> Shake it up, pisco sours. I can see the dilution going on. It's getting cold, nice and cold. Now we dump the ice oh. of that very cold glass. And there you have it. And look at this beautiful, beautiful cocktail. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Give it a little move so we can release a little bit of that. Oh, fantastic. Love that foam on top, nice and frosty. God bless the egg white. And last but not least is the garnish. You don't need to put a lot of it, but it's enough. It's an aromatic garnish. We traditionally, since the early 1920s, 1930s, was Angostura bitters. Mm -hmm. If you have a bitters bottle, you put it in there. And traditionally, you can put one dash or one drop. But we're going to make it beautiful. I'm gonna put a few more. That is good. And then, if you have a little tool to, like a toothpick, we just go and do like this. Ah, nice. I make a Pretty. little, I make a beautiful, beautiful pisco sour. Peruvian style. You gonna try it? Oh, you bet you I will. Cheers to the pisco sour. You know, the amazing aroma from the Angostura bitters, right in your nose, come right in. Really frothy, nice, velvety texture. The lime, I love the addition of the lime uh, oils coming from putting the peel inside the glass. And then the Pisco, it just jumps right at you. Even though it's a 311, I was expecting something a lot higher in alcohol, whereas this is a terrifically balanced cocktail and uh, quite a delight. And I, I said this at the beginning, if you've never tried a Pisco Sour before, it would behoove you to go give this a chance. It is quite a spectacular drink. Well, if you like this episode, please hit like and subscribe, and come back to more on Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption. Salute!